Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of SciCad Search. Today I've made a Newton's Cradle, and I would like to explain to you the basic principles of a Newton's Cradle, what it is, and how it works. A Newton's Cradle is a device with a base to hold it up, some frames, and then some spheres attached to pieces of string or wire are suspended onto the framework. If you pull up one ball and drop it, it'll hit the other balls, pushing off one ball on the other end, pushing it down, and then so on, until eventually it comes to a stop. So how does it work and what are the basic principles behind it? First, let's get to how it got its name. Newton's Cradle was named by Simon Preble, an English actor. The principle behind Newton's Cradle wasn't actually discovered by Isaac Newton himself, but instead it was discovered by Christian Huygens. The principle is called the conservation of momentum and energy. All it states is that energy must be conserved. It cannot be destroyed, nor can it be created. It can only change forms. The reason it got its name is because Isaac Newton's second law that force is equal to mass times acceleration can be used to drive the conservation of momentum and energy. So now let's get to how the cradle works. The conservation of momentum and energy makes it clear that if you drop one ball, some amount of the others must move. When the starting ball hits the second ball, the second ball hits the third ball, which hits the fourth ball, which hits the fifth ball, which in turn has nothing to hit. Instead, it gets a push, and it swings upwards, and then it swings down and pushes all the other balls in the other direction. And the same continuous swinging goes on. So when you pull one ball up, you're giving it potential energy. Potential energy is energy that's not being exerted yet. Its form can change. Currently, it can't act on the ball yet. But then, if you drop the ball, it gets kinetic energy from the gravity pulling it down. Then when it hits the other ball, it loses all of its kinetic energy, which gets turned into potential energy, and it compresses the next ball. By a tiny amount, it compresses the next ball. And then it expands, changing the energy from potential to kinetic, which pushes the next ball, and, and the chain goes on and on and on until the last ball compresses and expands and pushes on the fourth ball. And then it swings up, and the chain continues in the other direction. This would work with two balls, too. Let's say the first ball goes down, and it sends that same wave down, pushing all the other balls. But when that happens, one ball would go up. But then when you drop the second ball, it would push the next ball up. And since these two collisions are in very close proximity, that's why they would push these balls seemingly at the same time. But in fact, they have a very, very small distance apart. The reason the Newton's cradle doesn't just go on forever is because of energy changing forms. When it has air resistance and friction, slowing it down. And then when it vibrates the air around it, it, some of its energy dissipates into sound, which is why you hear the clicking noise. If you slow down the impact of these marbles, you might be able to hear a, a sequence of clicks, which would be indefinite proof that the marbles are actually hitting each other in a collision wave. What do you think will happen if I drop each marble at the same time? Let's find out. They bounce off both sides because they're sending their energy through all the marbles at the same time, which in turn bounces outwards. Since they hit each other, the waves go back and you could think of the energy as going in a wave, turning from kinetic to potential, kinetic to potential. But when each of the collisions hit each other in the middle ball, they bounce back off, which in turn will push off the end marbles. 
and the end marbles will come back and the same wave of collisions will happen. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you on another episode of Psychid Search.